This week I'm exploring Toronto and all of the amazing things that the great city of Canada has to offer. Hi, I'm Nikki. And I'm Matt. And, and welcome, welcome to our, our Unsettled journey. journey. So Toronto is one of Canada's great cities and it is the biggest out of Montreal, Vancouver, and uh, also one of the biggest cities in the world. It has a lot to offer. They've got a really large international resident base, so it's a really fun city to explore and visit. It's not too far from Niagara Falls, and we drove, which meant we had to cross the border. So in order to cross the border, the process was fairly smooth and simple. We just had to fill out information on the Arrive Can app. That was an app that you can download, and then we did have to provide a negative COVID test, which we took about three days before our arrival. Matt and I are traveling separately this week, so I'm here with a family member celebrating a milestone birthday, but he is enjoying the rest of Washington, and soon I will head back to meet back up with him to continue traveling. The St. Lawrence Market got its start in the 1800s and is a huge public market near Jarvis Street in Toronto, and they have all kinds of different international foods, just about anything that you think you might want or to be looking for for food, drink, even some shopping is here at the market. So if you are in the downtown area, it's a great place to check out and walk around. It goes most days of the week, although it's closed on Sundays and Mondays, but we're shopping around here now. Of course, being in Canada, they are known for having maple syrup, so they have a large selection here of Canada gifts and syrup. Toronto has a really nice harbor front, and just outside of the city, they have a chain of islands, and you can take ferries and water taxis to go visit the islands. Now they're operating a winter schedule right now, so the ferry service is limited. There are more options in the summer months, but it really offers a great view of the city and you can go visit different beaches and different activities on the islands. This is a look at the Island Cafe, which in those summer months when it's at the peak, this is probably really busy offering great food. This is Wards Island Beach, and it's the closest beach to the Wards Island Ferry Stop. Now the Wards Island Ferry is the only one that was running today, again for the winter schedule, but this is a great escape from the busy city of Toronto if you're visiting to come out here. And probably in the summer months, you'd find lots of people laying out at the beach, relaxing, enjoying the views of the lake. People must live here on the Toronto Islands because there are lots of different cute cottages that we've been seeing, so must be nice to live out here. The power plant is located on the harbor front of Toronto and it is a public art exhibit. So if you like art, this area has a lot of outdoor space out by the harbor and I believe you can make a donation to the gallery when you visit as your admission, but has different works of art from local artists. The Eaton Center is downtown Toronto's shopping area, and this huge mall has a bunch of different stores and places to shop, eat, different department stores, local stores, and it's centrally located to downtown. So you can find a lot of different stores to browse around, and right now we are shopping around, just kind of getting some holiday ideas because they are right around the corner. So it's a really nice place to come if you are staying near downtown Toronto. The Young and Dundas Square in Toronto is typically referred to as the New York City of Toronto because of the big huge billboards and the lights. It's a really fun area to spend some time and see the action that's going on. You'll see people hanging out, sometimes performers, music. So it is a great place to check out, especially if you're visiting the Eden Center, which is right next door. Another great option for shopping is the PATH system in downtown Toronto. This underground system is the world's largest underground shopping complex, and it connects 70 different buildings in the downtown area. So you can easily spend lots of time exploring the different areas of retail space down below the city of Toronto. This sign is located in Nathan Phillips Square, which is off of Queen Street in downtown Toronto, and gives you a really nice picture of the Toronto sign that you can send your family and your friends. Tonight's dinner is at the Keg Mansion. Now, the Keg is a restaurant that's located all around Canada, but this is their flagship location. This is in Toronto on Jarvis Street, and the 
restaurant actually took over an old, old mansion, so it has a lot of history to it. It is supposedly haunted, so we're really excited to have a really awesome dinner at the Keg Mansion. we chose to stay at this week is the Delta Hotel. It is a Marriott property and it has one of the best locations of the hotels to choose from in downtown Toronto. It is steps away from the CN Tower and the things that there are to do around there, the Rogers Center, the aquarium, and only a few blocks from the harbor front. Now this hotel has about 46 levels to it and on the 46th level if you're part of the club level rooms you get your own kind of club level lounge that's open for breakfast and drinks in the evening they have their own on-site bar as well as a restaurant that serves breakfast lunch and dinner and uh, the location is probably one of the best things about it but we have a really comfortable room with the harbor view so far the service has been really great here they convert your currency right at the front desk since we are visiting from the u.s so that's been a nice feature and everybody's really pleasant, welcomes you back to the hotel. So it's a great place to stay. Niagara Falls is one of those places that continuously gets visitors from all over the world wanting to see the magnificent waterfalls. They have the American Falls and the Horseshoe Falls. And to me, the better view of those falls is on the Canadian side. So visiting Toronto, you're only about an hour away and there's a lot of different things around the Niagara Falls area to enjoy. There's wineries close by. Um, but you really get to take in the awesome sights of the falls. So Clifton Hill is the very touristy area in Niagara Falls and they have a lot of different attractions and things for families, but this is definitely the emptiest I've ever seen it. I grew up in Pittsburgh, so I would visit Niagara Falls a lot and usually it's packed with people, crowds are huge. Here right now, this is definitely very empty and um, Everything is open, but the crowds are very low. So that is going to do it for this week's video in Toronto. If you like this type of video and want to continue following our travels around, we are currently traveling full time. So hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, and you can follow our other social media. The accounts will be linked down below. We have a Patreon page, an Instagram, a TikTok. All of those accounts will give you content that you won't find here on YouTube. So we really appreciate the support and I will see you in next week's video. Bye.